stories that matter. The journey of life from birth to death is an extraordinary trip, sometimes filled with great joy and excitement, but at other times filled with pain, sorrow, and disappointment. Stories That Matter shares both extremes with you. Sometimes our stories will make you feel very happy, but the journey of life is not all happiness. Other times, the journey of life will make you feel sad, for all of us have experienced both extremes. Stories That Matter will begin right after the break with a story that will touch your heart in the journey of life. Welcome to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest today, Lori uh, leader and thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. It's uh, early morning when we shoot this shot and I I can't wait to get started on this story because Stories That Matter always takes on a range of, of people with different interests and I find that the good Lord uses you, me, those people that appear, all of the staff to share some story for something that's going on in somebody's life. But we we have a lot to talk about. Here's the first one I have. Okay. You and your husband have 13 kids, yes, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> and what's the ages? Um, our oldest one is 25, and our youngest one is three years old. And then we have four grandkids. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, man, that is that household must be awfully full. It is, it and, is. And, and where are you employed at? What do you do? Um, I work in the Dickinson County K-State Research and Extension Office, and I do their family nutrition programming um, that is uh, through SNAP Education. What's SNAP mean? Uh, SNAP is the uh, supplemental nutrition um, programming, um, the funding that we get through the, the state um, that basically runs what used to be the food stamp program and now they've called it SNAP. Hmm. Okay. And so what's your uh, educational background in the nutritional field? So um, a big part of my education is just that I've had to... Being a mom of 13 kids? <laughs> yeah, I've been a mom for, for over 25 years and having all those kids. Um, I also have worked a lot with other organizations and uh, done programs like um, free farmers markets and helping people learn how to kind of stretch their dollars and stuff through um, or organizations where I volunteered. Um, I've been working for the uh, extension office for a little over a year now doing uh, programming in the schools and with other groups and organizations, adults and that type of thing. Okay, and are you from this area originally? I am not, I am not. I um, actually was born in Dallas um, and my parents were missionaries, so we lived all over the place, and we also uh, lived out of the country. I lived in Mexico for a few years, um, so we moved around quite a bit, but then um, I married someone, and he was in the military, and we've moved around all over. Oh, I so, bet you have. Yeah. So you, you moved with family as uh, your parents being missionary. What, what, tell me about their missionary work. Um, so we were in uh, Mexico for most of the time when I was growing up as far as them being missionaries, and uh, my dad taught in a Bible school there and um, he went and we went out to different villages and stuff. We lived in uh, Oaxaca, Mexico mostly and uh, so we grew up kind of doing that type of work and helping others and going into the villages and so yeah. Are your, are your parents still uh, with you or have they passed? No, they're still with me and after I moved away, I was the youngest of four, after I moved away um, they went to China and the Marshall Islands and Spain and they still do some of their work in Spain but yeah. <laughs> that is that is so neat. Hmm. Now the 13 kids, the 25 year old, of course, is he out of the household? I'm assuming he is. That he's, he's married, uh, and, and that's they, where the grandkids that's come where from. Two of the two? grandkids come from. Yeah. So, um, and they actually don't live very far from here. They live in Junction City. So, um, so that's kind of nice to have that them is. close by. And uh, and then the next one down is married, and they have two kids, and they live here in Abilene. And uh, so, yeah, and then our oldest daughter um, is married and she lives in Junction but doesn't have any kids yet. Yeah, wow, <laughs> that's an interesting story. I could pull a dirty trick on you, say, okay, what's the ages of the kids? I've asked you that one. What's your names, their middle names, and their dates of birth and all that? <laughs> and you would be able to do it, but it I may take could. you a couple. I I'm, probably I could. bet you, you could do it. <laughs> oh, so uh, with the program that you're with now, do you actually work for Kansas State University assigned to Dickinson County, or do you work for Dickinson County? So I technically work for the state. Um, the program is run through uh, K-State uh, Research and Extension, um, but I am actually paid through a grant from the state um, that is through the SNAP Ed, which is funded through USDA. Okay, and if the uh, viewers want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, the best way to do that would be to send me an email, um, which is lleder at ksu.edu. 
All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Laurie, I have a, oh, several things for you today, and I know that you prepared some food because we talked about uh, nutrition, how right. to prepare some nutritious food. I didn't know at the time that we started on it, two, two things about you. Number one was that uh, you had 13 kids. I did not know that right. because that changes things in your, uh, in your family dynamics when uh, you have to kind of plan meals and budgets become yes. important. Yes, and I know important. you told me that you, you and your husband decided to retire uh, from the military and then to locate here permanently. And right. I think that's I think that's cool. You moved in a football team and won yes. uh, to, uh, <laughs> to be able to be in this community. Yeah. And uh, I wanna talk about the nutritional aspect of it and we're gonna cover that in just a minute okay. before we cut away to break. But you also told me something that I, f I find amazing that I'm going to share with the audience okay. when we come back because uh, this is a country that is clearly overweight yes. and you and I are going to talk about that right. when we come back. So we're going to cut away, we're going to take a break, we'll be right back. You're watching Stories That Matter. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Lori Leader. And Lori, I want to be sure I get this right, Family Nutrition Program Assistant with Dickinson County Extension. Correct. Good, I was able to read it right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were talking, we just got into this area before. One of the things at, at K-State when you're at the campus area and uh, in other locations, I see and hear this a lot. People who come in from other countries, they say, man, Americans are fat. And, uh, and I can't disagree with that. Right. Uh, way overfed. And sometimes, you know, be, I have a history degree too, so sometimes if I'm looking back at old pictures, 1900, 100 years ago or whatever, and you, and then you begin to, for whatever reason, when I, if I was looking for something with Wild Bill Hickok or Billy the Kid or something like that, you right. know, because of old Abilene Town, maybe looking at that, say, man, there isn't anybody there that's overweight. Right. What has happened? What's the difference? How's this, right. what, what, what's happened? Well, you know, I'm coming from a standpoint of just what my observations are and everything, but one of the big things that I, I see is portion size is a big one. Um, we tend to uh, have that out of balance. So we might have, uh, with my job, we talk about our five food groups, um, and we might have uh, one of those food groups, like our vegetables or fruits, um, we have very small portions, and then we get to our protein, and our grains, and we have very large uh, portions. And so um, I, a lot of times what I do is I, I tell people, you know, you go in and you get a steak and everybody's getting, you know, a really good size steak. Um, in reality, a portion size uh, for our protein or our meat, usually what we're eating, um, would be about the size of your fist. And so um, if, we, if we look at that portion size and we look around and we see what's being served in restaurants and even in our homes, it's really out of balance. Yeah, I, I would certainly agree with you. Our stomach is about the size of our fist, right, isn't it? Right, right. And so part of the problem, if I understand it correctly, part of the problem is because we, uh, we eat so much, we eat so fast. And by the time it processes that your, st your head says to your stomach, we're full. By that time it's happened, you've overeaten. That's right. And That's that right. consistently happens. And if we were to eat slower, and take some time in between the bites, then that would catch up and the, the head would tell the stomach, we're full. Exactly. But we don't exactly. do that very well. No, no, <laughs> we, we tend to kind of almost inhale our food where we might chew it a couple of times and then we're swallowing before we've really given our system a time to let us know that we're full. And I did not know this, of course, until we were talking beforehand and I told you that I was on a, I've been on a little diet, uh, naturally slim, something that the county does. And, you know, it's more re-education of it. Right. It isn't that I don't eat all the things I want. Or, oh, they discourage my milk and my candy bars. But, right. <laughs> but the rest of it, well, I, I seem to be all right. It's just portion control. Yes. But when we got ready to start, you were telling me, well, you know, Doug, in the past year or so. Yeah, a little I've, over a year. A little over a year. I've lost 90 pounds. I have. That's amazing. I have. How'd you do it? Um, well, a, a big part of it, again, is portion control. I don't eat more than a certain amount, um, but I just found that my health was really kind of declining, and I, I wasn't doing as well, and of course, I have a lot of kids to keep up with, and, uh, and so um, I started watching what I eat. Now, like you were saying, I don't necessarily not eat certain things. I just watch the amount of it that I'm eating, and I make sure that I, I don't eat a lot of those higher fats and higher sugar foods um, that I take maybe a bite 
if I'm gonna do that. Um, and then I eat smaller amounts throughout the day. And so that portion size, like you said, your stomach is not very big. So what happens is we stretch our stomach out and then we are filling it up more and more. So um, if you get in the habit, it's a lifestyle change, so. And really that's the key to it, isn't it? It is. So if you're watching us, if you're sitting on the couch at home and you're eating something, it becomes, it's willpower. Yes. And, and it's really a decision that you make to say, I'm, I don't need it and I'm going to pick and choose the more healthy food. Right. Is that primarily what your program consists of? Did you it try is. to get the word out it and is. educate Cause, the people? Because what we're trying to do is reach that group of people that are on those limited incomes and they need to uh, be able to make those food dollars stretch and, uh, and learn how to do it in a healthy way. And the misconception is that it costs more to eat healthy. Um, but in reality, what happens is when we eat those unhealthy foods, we actually eat more of them, which is why we get these bigger portions because we're used to um, having to eat a lot of it to feel satisfied. But when we eat the really healthy foods, it sticks with our system and we're more satisfied and our body doesn't need as much. Well, so how is it that you can get that word out? Because it sounds pretty good. Right. And then you go to the refrigerator and you say, well, I think I'll make this, this, and this. Right. And, right. Then, and then you're back to overeating. Yes. But you, you've hit upon a couple of things. You said, because I'm talking to people that we need to be careful with the finances. Right. Uh, they may be at that stage in their life where the extra weight is a major health factor. Yes. And uh, so how, how, do you, how do you get that out? Because you've had to live that. Yes. You, because of you were preparing food and 13 kids, and right. I'm sure there was a lot of stress and moving point A to point B. Right. And then all of a sudden the weight's on you. Right. And you said, what, how, does, how does this work? Because I don't want my kids to have to carry all this extra weight. Right. And then you have, you and your husband have the conversation of, and here's our, here's our budget and we're, we're eating way too much. That's right. And it's not healthy. It's a whole cycle. Right. How, how do you get that? You implemented it for your family. Yes. And what, how did you do that? Well, I think the key for us is a, uh, taking the time to do some preparation ahead of time. Because what happens a lot of times is we do get busy and then we tend to kind of take things on the go and we're grabbing those unhealthy options um, or that fast food or something like that. Um, but we have to work within that budget. So um, buying things that make sense, sometimes buying that thing in bulk is not always the cheaper option. So we have to really watch uh, those amounts, how much things cost. But for instance, um, we uh, do a lot of ground turkey in our home because what we discovered is we could get frozen ground turkey for about $1.25 a pound. Um, and the turkey obviously is a little bit lower in fat. Doesn't mean that we don't ever have ground beef or some of those other things, um, but we kind of switch it out so that we can make that food dollar stretch. So. Yeah, yeah. And w with your job now in Dickinson County, are you, are you going to uh, grocery stores and you're doing things to try to help them understand what the customer yes. needs to be able to make a healthy choice? Yeah, we, uh, we are just starting a program um, that we're rolling out um, we're one of just 10 counties right now that are doing it in, in Kansas, and it's called Stock Healthy, Shop Healthy. And the goal of this is, is two things. One is we want to um, help the grocery stores and those convenience stores and those smaller ones in the rural areas uh, to figure out how they can be profitable and still offer healthy options because a lot of times it's guesswork. And then we also want to make sure that uh, we teach the customers how to choose the healthy options. Awesome. We're going to cut away. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Stories That Matter. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Lori Leader. And Lori, I want to be sure I get this right, Family Nutrition Program Assistant with Dickinson County Extension. Correct. Good. I was able to read it right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were talking, we just got into this area before. One of the things at, at K-State when you're at the campus area and uh, in other locations, I see and hear this a lot. People who come in from other countries, they say, man, Americans are fat. And, uh, and I can't disagree with that. Right. Uh, way overfed. And sometimes, you know, I have a history degree too, so sometimes if I'm looking back at old pictures, 1900, 100 years ago or whatever, and you, and then you begin to, for whatever reason, when, if I was looking for something with Wild Bill Hickok or Billy the Kid or something like that, you right. know, because of old Abilene Town, maybe looking at that, man, there isn't anybody there that's overweight. Right. What has happened? What's the difference? How's this, right. what, what, what's happened? 
Well, you know, I'm coming from a standpoint of just what my observations are and everything, but one of the big things that I, I see is portion size is a big one. Um, we tend to uh, have that out of balance. So we might have, uh, with my job, we talk about our five food groups. Um, and we might have uh, one of those food groups, like our vegetables or fruits, um, we have very small portions. And then we get to our protein and our grains, and we have very large uh, portions. And so um, I, a lot of times what I do is I, I tell people, you know, you go in and you get a steak and everybody's getting, you know, a really good sized steak. Um, in reality, a portion size uh, for our protein or our meat, usually what we're eating, um, would be about the size of your fist. And so um, if, we, if we look at that portion size and we look around and we see what's being served in restaurants and even in our homes, it's really out of balance. Yeah, I, I would certainly agree with you. Our stomach is about the size of our fist, right, isn't it? Right, right. And so part of the problem, if I understand it correctly, part of the problem is because we uh, we eat so much, we eat so fast, and by the time it processes that your st your head says to your stomach, we're full. By that time it's happened, you've overeaten. That's right. And That's that right. consistently happens. And if we were to eat slower and take some time in between the bites, then that would catch up and the, the head would tell the stomach, we're full. Exactly. But we don't exactly. do that very well. No, no. <laughs> we, we tend to kind of almost inhale our food where we might chew it a couple of times and then we're swallowing before we've really given our system a time to let us know that we're full. And I did not know this, of course, until we were talking beforehand and I told you that I was on a, I've been on a little diet, uh, naturally slim, something that the county does. And, you know, it's more re-education of it. Right. It, it isn't that I don't eat all the things I want. Or, oh, they discourage my milk and my candy bars. But, right. <laughs> but the rest of it, well, I, I seem to be all right. It's just portion control. Yes. But when we got ready to start, you were telling me, well, you know, Doug, in the past year or so. Yeah, a little I've, over a year. A little over a year. I've lost 90 pounds. I have. That's amazing. I have. How'd you do it? Um, well, a, a big part of it, again, is portion control. I don't eat more than a certain amount, um, but I just found that my health was really kind of declining, and I, I wasn't doing as well, and of course, I have a lot of kids to keep up with, and, uh, and so um, I started watching what I eat. Now, like you were saying, I don't necessarily not eat certain things. I just watch the amount of it that I'm eating, and I make sure that I, I don't eat a lot of those higher fats and higher sugar foods um, that I take maybe a bite if I'm gonna do that. Um, and then I eat smaller amounts throughout the day. And so that portion size, like you said, your stomach is not very big. So what happens is we stretch our stomach out and then we are filling it up more and more. So um, if you get in the habit, it's a lifestyle change, so. And really that's the key to it, isn't it? It is. So if you're watching us, if you're sitting on the couch at home and you're eating something, it becomes, it's willpower. Yes. And, and it's really a decision that you make to say, I'm, I don't need it and I'm going to pick and choose the more healthy food. Right. Is that primarily what your program consists of? Did it you is. try to get the word out it and is. educate Cause, the people? Because what we're trying to do is reach that group of people that are on those limited incomes and they need to uh, be able to make those food dollars stretch and, uh, and learn how to do it in a healthy way. And the misconception is that it costs more to eat healthy. Um, but in reality, what happens is when we eat those unhealthy foods, we actually eat more of them, which is why we get these bigger portions because we're used to um, having to eat a lot of it to feel satisfied. But when we eat the really healthy foods, it sticks with our system and we're more satisfied and our body doesn't need as much. Well, so how is it that you can get that word out? Because it sounds pretty good. Right. And then you go to the refrigerator and you say, well, I think I'll make this, this, and this. Right. And right. then and then you're back to overeating. Yes. But you, you've hit upon a couple of things. You said, because I'm talking to people that we need to be careful with the finances. Right. Uh, they may be at that stage in their life where the extra weight is a major health factor. Yes. And... Uh, so how how do you how do you get that out because you've had to live that yes you because of you were preparing food and 13 kids and right. I'm sure there was a lot of stress and moving point A to point B right and then all of a sudden the weight's on you right and you said what how does how does this work because I don't want my kids to have to carry all this extra weight right and then you have you and your husband have the conversation of and here's our here's our budget and we're we're eating way too much that's right and it's not healthy it's a whole cycle right how do, how do you get that you implemented it for your family. Yes. And what, how did you do that? Well, I think the key for us is a, 
uh, taking the time to do some preparation ahead of time. Because what happens a lot of times is we do get busy and then we tend to kind of take things on the go and we're grabbing those unhealthy options um, or that fast food or something like that. Um, but we have to work within that budget. So um, buying things that make sense, sometimes buying that thing in bulk is not always the cheaper option. So we have to really watch uh, those amounts, how much things cost. But for instance, um, we, uh, do a lot of ground turkey in our home because what we discovered is we could get frozen ground turkey for about a dollar twenty-five a pound, um, and the turkey obviously is a little bit lower in fat. Doesn't mean that we don't ever have ground beef or some of those other things, um, but we kind of switch it out so that we can make that food dollar stretch. So. Yeah, yeah. And with your job now in Dickinson County, are you are you going to uh, grocery stores and you're doing things to try to help them understand what the customer yes. needs to be able to make a healthy choice? Yeah, we uh, we are just starting a program um, that we're rolling out. Um, we're one of just 10 counties right now that are doing it in, in Kansas, and it's called Stock Healthy, Shop Healthy. And the goal of this is, is two things. One is we want to um, help the grocery stores and those convenience stores and those smaller ones in the rural areas uh, to figure out how they can be profitable and still offer healthy options because a lot of times it's guesswork. And then we also want to make sure that uh, we teach the customers how to choose the healthy options. Awesome. We're going to cut away. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Stories That Matter. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Lori Leader. And Lori is the Family Nutrition Program Assistant with Dickinson County Extension. Did I get it right? Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, and you've been working on a, a program that's a Stock Healthy, Shop Healthy program. Yes. You're trying to introduce that into grocery stores across uh, Dickinson County. Yes. All right, so far? Yes. All right, I'm doing a pretty good job. <laughs> and uh, you've got 13 kids. You I and do. your husband have 13 kids. Yes. Uh, he's retired military. And and he's uh, working on a master's degree at K-State. Yes. And then uh, if the folks weren't watching this earlier, Lori told me before we started, she said, in the past year, I've lost 90 pounds. Mm -hmm. And so when she is talking about nutrition and she's talking about all of those things with it, she's living it too. Yes. So when, you're, when you are at your job with the extension, uh, see, it's uh, Dickinson County Extension, What's the, what's the biggest question, the most consistent question that you get asked because chances are somebody watching this has that same question. Right. I would say one of the, the biggest questions is, does that mean I have to give up everything that I enjoy eating? So those, those foods that when I go into the classroom, we categorize them as sometimes foods. And we say you have your everyday foods and you have sometimes foods, which means we don't have to give up everything altogether that we think isn't good for us. It just means that we need to not be having it all the time and yeah. we need to have it every once in a while. Yeah, awesome. I agree with you. Have you, have you had fun today, Lori? I have. Uh, thank you for being here. See you next time on Stories That Matter. <music>